Tonight, the push for Violene's Law as a new poll shows more Queenslanders are living in fear. Only Seven News is on patrol with the officers dealing with the state's young criminals. Their homes were destroyed in the 2022 floods, so why haven't these Ipswich residents been bought out? Wild water crossings on Bribie as heavy rain creates a lagoon breakthrough. A man arrested for vandalising luxury cars. We ask him why. The Aussie Olympian cleared over this cheeky ride, but his sport has been rocked by a shock protest. And Taylor Swift on the move. The superstar flies into Sydney. Could her next stop be a Queensland getaway? Live from Brisbane, 7 News with Sharon Gadella and Max Butcher. Good evening. There are calls tonight for tougher youth crime laws in honour of murdered grandmother Violene White. It's sparked by a worsening crime crisis as disturbing new polling shows almost half of Queenslanders fear for their safety. More than two weeks after Violene White's murder, Cabinet meets in Ipswich as anger over the government's handling of youth crime grows louder. The youth crime crisis is ripping the heart out of Queensland. We have very strong penalties in place, up to life sentences. The grandmother's death sparking calls for tougher legislation. Ipswich Council leading calls for Violene's law. It's making sure that if someone is a violent offender, that they don't get bail. It's something that the family have asked us to do and it's something that we will champion for our community. Details are yet to be worked out though. The council also wants a permanent police shop front at Town Square, Red Bank Plains. This as new figures show more and more Queensland households are living in fear. We are constantly talking to Queenslanders and so that's why these polls don't come as a surprise to us. The UCOMS poll showing a total of 45% of voters have safety concerns. In the South East, 41% feel somewhat unsafe to very unsafe. In regional Queensland, it's much higher. 56%. Yet 14.5% have been exposed to or a victim of crime. A call out um, to the state government and the police to work with us. While Cabinet continues to weigh up other safety measures, the Premier is also looking to shopping centres to bolster security. Private security, CCTV and lighting. Leith Ray says thieves have broken into her Cairns cafe and home 20 times. So something needs to change. Of the 1,500 people surveyed in the poll, 20% want serious offenders to be treated as adults. 17% want mandatory minimum sentences. Others believe parents should be held criminally responsible for their child's actions. We accept that we need to improve community safety. More work ahead. The government's also spoken to police about boosting high visibility patrols around shopping centres, especially in Ipswich. This week, the Premier will meet with the Shopping Centre Council of Australia. Stephen Miles has also acknowledged the government needs to improve the perception of community safety. Now, that is an issue shaping as a crucial challenge for Labor. Marlena Wap at State Parliament. Now to Georgia Costi on the Gold Coast. Georgia, been a snap meeting among senior police there. Max, it was prompted by claims that there is unrest within the ranks of the Gold Coast Police Service. Some officers on the front line claim that they aren't being supported by their bosses. It comes after a decision was also made to stand down a popular senior sergeant for authorising other officers to ram a stolen car earlier this month. The acting deputy commissioner attended today's talks at Pimpermar Station and he does insist that morale is high amongst most officers and that the leadership team is there to support frontline staff. What's been happening definitely warranted uh, an engagement between us and the leadership team down here um, and certainly us getting together to make sure that the people who are going out and doing the job all day every day feel supported by us. It's understood that senior police will also hold another previously scheduled meeting here on Wednesday. Georgia Cossey at Coomera tonight. Visitors to Gari are being warned of heightened risks of dingo attacks. Two tourists were bitten over the weekend, but it isn't deterring holidaymakers. Gari's famed Lake Wobby and the beach near Dilly Village, the sites of two dingo bites on Saturday. The victims were two women from separate tour groups, an 18-year-old treated for puncture wounds to her leg. Both included single dingoes um, and uh, may have been prevented if, if people had been walking with a stick.
Rangers have located one dingo stepping up patrols to find the second, warning this unhealthy love affair with the wild dogs is contributing to the rising problem. It's slightly above what we've had in previous years. Two years ago, there were five cases of high-risk behaviour like nipping and biting. Last year, those cases spiked 35 high-risk behaviours and more than 200 lower risk, like growling. This year, there's already been nine troubling incidents. One dingo has been euthanised. But despite the dangers, tourists keep coming. It's been 20% growth year on year on year. Yearly visitation is climbing towards half a million people, but despite previous calls for caps, it's not being considered by the Environment Minister. The state is trying to recruit a dozen extra rangers. Six are now on the beat. It's not being loved to death, but we need to be vigilant. Even more so as breeding season begins. You've got a higher testosterone, higher activity of dingoes moving around. Jacqueline Robson, 7 News. A war of words over national security is heating up as the Prime Minister touches down in Western Australia. Dozens of asylum seekers are on Nauru, with the opposition claiming border force is at breaking point. Here you go, here you go. Accepting one challenge, not to cut GST payments to WA, pledged in ink, but happy to make it more permanent. Let's go to a tattoo parlour, we can get it tattooed on. As another challenge is put... I just think if the Prime Minister's got something to say, he should have the guts to face up to the media and say it. And happily accepted. Peter Dutton needs to stop acting in such an irresponsible opportunistic way. Accusing him of playing into the people smugglers hands by politicising the arrival of 39 asylum seekers on Friday in remote northwestern Australia with comments like this. Well, the reason the boat got there uh, uh, is because the government has uh, suspended or, or cancelled surveillance flights. Rebuked by Border Force for suggesting the borders have weakened, today hitting back at the agency he once administered. The organisation is at breaking point. Blaming Mr Albanese's government. They've ripped a cumulative $600 million out of Operation Sovereign Borders. Complete nonsense once again. Uh, here from Peter Dutton. The budget papers show Labor's funding of border protection is $470 million more than the coalition had promised. And tonight, another slapdown for Peter Dutton from Australian Border Force, this time from Commissioner Michael Outram, who says, contrary to his claims, Border Force's funding is at a record high. All 39 men are now in offshore detention in Nauru. Mr Albanese insists never to settle in Australia. Mark Riley. 7 News. Four people had been rushed to hospital after they were struck by lightning as wild storms lashed Sydney. The patients, including a teenage boy, a woman in her 20s and two people in their 30s, are all in a serious but stable condition. There were 75,000 strikes within a 100 kilometre radius of Sydney within three hours. They caused widespread damage, setting homes on fire, bringing down trees and damaging a runway at the airport causing major delays for flights out of Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Well, now back to our local weather. And, Tony, there was more heavy rain in the southeast today. Yes, yeah, Sharon, we saw some punchy showers and storms taking off from late morning through the course of the afternoon. 47 millimetres of rain recorded in just 30 minutes near Burr Desert. With slow-moving storms and severe thunderstorm warnings were issued for inland parts of the southeast briefly. Since then, it's all spread to lighter rain and eased back. At the moment, we have some steady rain running from the Gold Coast up towards the Lockyer Valley with some bigger cells over the Darling Downs. A few more showers this week. I'll be back soon with the forecast. Tiny. The sole survivor of Victoria's deadly mushroom lunch has paid tribute to his wife. Pastor Ian Wilkinson fought back tears to mark their 45th wedding anniversary in an emotional sermon at his church. Back in the church he loves, Pastor Ian Wilkinson leading the service at the Corumburra Baptist Church, six months after he was left in a coma after eating lunch, allegedly poisoned with death cap mushrooms that killed his wife Heather and in-laws Don and Gail Patterson, his faith giving him strength. Let me encourage you to keep on going. The way is sometimes hard, but... Uh, God is good. He is with us. The video obtained exclusively by the Herald Sun is the first time he's been seen speaking about his recovery after the lunch last July, hosted by his estranged daughter-in-law, Erin Patterson. She has since been charged with three counts of murder and five of attempted murder. This has been a pretty big uh, week in my life. Wednesday was 
the day, uh, the anniversary day of my induction as pastor. Friday was my birthday, turning yeah. 70. And yesterday was our 45th wedding anniversary. A neighbour and friend says his loneliness is hurting. He struggles there. Um, it, it's not easy for him to be on his own in the home. We just ask how he is. He just says, I don't want to talk about it, which is fair enough. It's understood Pastor Ian Wilkinson will now resume duties leading his congregation here every Sunday morning. A significant step returning to the routine he's kept for decades. What do you think the big challenges will be for him this year? I think it's going to be the court case when, he go, when she goes to court. Paul Dowsley, 7 News. To breaking news now, the Mount Lindsay Highway is closed in both directions at Jimboomba after a serious multi-vehicle crash late this afternoon. It's understood at least three vehicles are involved, four people have been injured, two of them are critical, one person has to be cut from the wreckage. A helicopter has been called in to transport the most seriously injured to hospital. A Nationals MP has been recorded slurring her words during a Senate hearing. Now, there's a push for random alcohol testing in Parliament House with claims a heavy drinking culture is a big problem in Canberra. Is it restric Talking Taylor Swift. I've got the cheapest of Whoa. cheap tickets <laughs> at the last minute and my children are extremely happy. Before arts investment in the regions. Hello, Mr Collette. Lovely to see you again. Nationals Deputy Leader Perrin Davey says she had two drinks before this Senate hearing but claims she wasn't drunk. Having sit in this place now for uh, from when once the arts, uh, arts would come in and it would be a this is what we're saying. She was not drunk. She was fully coherent. The second Nationals MP appearing to have overindulged in two weeks, raising questions about the drinking culture on Capitol Hill. Barnaby, of course, uh, let's go to you. Why, uh, would you. why would you go to me? I've given up two things for Lent. One is drinking, the other one's talking about other people. There is no alcohol in my office. A bit of common sense uh, should apply. The Teals now calling for random alcohol testing in Parliament. We still see a trivialisation of alcohol consumption. Senator Davey is part of the team writing Parliament's tough new alcohol and drugs policy, a policy she'd probably be breaching if it had already kicked in. The Australian culture. Isabel Mullen, 7 News. The United States looks set to veto a push in the UN for a ceasefire in Gaza, despite spending weeks working on a deal to stop the fighting. It follows a high-profile leader's likening of the conflict to the Holocaust. From Israel's military, video. As soldiers search cars outside Gaza's NASA hospital, some, they say, used by Hamas militants in the deadly October 7th attack. We found a car belonging to Hamas with grenades inside, he says. According to Palestinian officials, Gaza's largest remaining hospital, chaotic in recent weeks, is now out of service. They say the enclave's death toll is now just under 29,000. The tragedy stirring this from Brazil's president. What's happening in the Gaza Strip to the Palestinian people has no parallel. But then he adds, it occurred when Hitler decided to kill the Jews. And he's demonised the Jewish state like the most virulent anti-Semite. He should be ashamed of himself. Israel's government summoned Brazil's ambassador to make clear its anger, while Algeria leads an effort to have the United Nations Security Council demand an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. The United States appears set to veto the Algerian push, arguing it might threaten separate ceasefire talks. Israel's Prime Minister is waving off both plans. We cannot leave a quarter of Hamas's terrorist battalions intact. Tim Lester, 7 News. Hundreds of Russians have been arrested for publicly paying their respects to Alexei Navalny, the former opposition leader to Vladimir Putin. Tributes have been swiftly removed from Moscow's streets 
Well, leaders have blamed Putin for the death in an Arctic penal colony over the weekend, and Navalny's body still hasn't been handed over to his family. We have more breaking news now, and the police commissioner has revealed she's weighing up her future. Sally Guy, this has blindsided senior police and the government. Max, it certainly is shocking news to receive. Now, Katarina Carroll has been in the position since 2019, but she's told Seven News, I have not had formal discussions with the minister yet. Those conversations around her contract will start soon adding, I may not ask for an extension to my contract. She says, I've been at, from G20 to QFES, it's Queensland Fire and Emergency Services, for over 11 years at the highest level. I'm seriously considering my options and one is not asking for an extension. She adds that the discussions around the contract will commence soon, but until those discussions happen, she is remains firmly focused on tackling crime. She does admit, though, that pressures and challenges around the front line is something that is of concern for her police service. It's certainly shocking news and we'll bring you more as it comes to hand, Max. Sally Guy there. Box office blockbuster Oppenheimer has dominated the BAFTA Awards in London in a positive precursor to the Oscars. It wasn't Australia's night, but one Aussie did manage to charm a prince. Stepping out solo, oh, nice to you. the Prince of Wales, without his Kate. So our Kate, acting royalty, politely stepped in to keep the future king company as Britain saluted the silver screen and its beloved stars. With a musical revival too. I'm heading over for Mardi Gras. I'll be singing on Bondi Beach this time next week. Margot Robbie missed out on the leading actress gong for Barbie. Here's the ugly corner here. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome. The big winner... Christopher Nolan. Oppenheimer. Gillian Murphy. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. The second World War thriller winning seven BAFTAs. The film industry now in the thick of the awards season. The BAFTAs seen as a good form guide ahead of the Oscars in just three weeks. Soaking it all in, Aussie Sophie Wilde from Boy Swallows Universe and Talk To Me, nominated for the BAFTA Rising Star. When I walked in, I was like, I'm at, at the BAFTAs. Like, that's insane. Um... Yeah, I feel like it's all been a pinch me moment, really. Oppenheimer, now on track for a big night in Hollywood too. In London, Hugh Whitfeld, 7 News. Superstar singer Taylor Swift has touched down in Sydney ahead of the next leg of her record-breaking Eras tour. She has four days off before the first show on Friday night, with the rumour mill working overtime about a potential stop in Queensland. The end of her Melbourne era, Taylor Swift boards her private jet basking in the afterglow of her three biggest concerts ever. Last night, marvelling at the massive crowd, 96,000 each night. The math is that it's 288,000 people in three nights. Melbourne, you're the love of my life. A love story that will continue in Sydney, where this afternoon she arrived under a cloud of rain and shroud of secrecy. Any second now! Her convoy slipped into Crown, where she'll enjoy four days off before another four shows. But if she wants to escape the gloomy weather, Queensland, is calling. Come here and shake it off, is what we say. Taylor should be having a concert in Queensland. That might be a stretch, but a holiday is not. After all, she's been here before. <laughs> Visiting Movie World, staying on Hamilton Island and overwhelming young fans. I'm so happy. <laughs> Thousands of Queensland Swifties will now follow her to Sydney for the next four sold-out shows, with dozens of extra flights from Brisbane this week. But someone who won't be on board is our Premier. I would like to see Taylor come here, not least of which because I have a disappointed nine-year-old who cannot believe that her father is the Premier of Queensland and cannot buy her tickets. We can't all be the lucky one. Georgia Holland, 7 News. Dozens of drivers taking their chances at a treacherous Bribe Island crossing. Incredible video next. Thousands of dollars out of pocket. A community's flood buyback battle. The Tesla-powered boost for a major southeast city. And a soccer pitch surprise. The unexpected landing at a school.
Turning the tide on youth crime, only seven news is with the straight shooting senior officer responsible for tackling the crisis. We take a strong line and strong measures. No nonsense, no excuses. What police are doing and why he insists it's working. Seven news coming up soon. The family of a 10-year-old Gold Coast girl who was injured in a crash on her way to a Taylor Swift concert says she remains in a coma. Relatives say Freya Pokoraya's condition is not considered life-threatening. Her 16-year-old sister Mika was killed in the crash near Dubbo. Their mother was also injured. Ipswich residents are set for a renewable energy boost with works underway to house a giant Tesla battery at Swan Bank. We'll go on the site of an old coal-fired generator, creating jobs here locally, delivering clean energy to what is one of our great industrial cities. The battery will supply more than two thirds of Ipswich power for two hours each night. Drivers on Bribey Island are being warned against beach bashing across a surging channel of water. Some have been captured dicing with danger after heavy rain created a lagoon breakthrough. On Bribie Island, crowds are washout watching. Torrents of water bursting out into the ocean. It's pushing a lot of water through a very narrow passage, so, so that water can, can actually get, get quite down. Uh, those currents can get quite fast. It happens once every few years when heavy rain pairs with powerful ocean currents to erode sand on the shore. The banks broke at both Wellsby and Mermaid Lagoons. You get a little bit of erosion and then more and more erosion until you, you end up having one of these, these wash throughs. What some view as a natural spectacle, others see as a challenge. Four-wheel drives running the gauntlet across the raging passage. Some drivers weren't so lucky. This P-plater bogged. Sop, damn you P-plater. A danger environment authorities and experts are warning against. It can be a hazard as well, so, so I would suggest people staying away from, from this. The washout is expected to last over the coming days, and while it may be eye-catching, the advice is to admire from afar. Garth Burley, 7 News. A hot air balloon has made an unexpected landing on a school soccer field in Melbourne. It appeared to arrive safely on the school grounds. Students tried to help it take off again, but there was a puncture in the balloon. Southeast flood victims left in limbo, promised buybacks from the state government. Two years later, they're still out of pocket hundreds of thousands of dollars. Their fight for justice is just ahead on 7 News. He's the straight-talking police officer tackling a growing crisis. Coming up, we're on patrol with Queensland's Youth Crime Busters, a 7 News exclusive. Why this warehouse erupted into flames. The car keying vandal caught in the act. And why an equestrian's cheeky outfit could cost him his spot at the Olympics. A group of Ipswich residents left devastated by the 2022 floods has labelled the government buyback offer for their homes as pathetic. Many have been paying rent and paying mortgages simultaneously and are furious the process is dragging on. United in loss, their homes rendered worthless by the 2022 floods. Well, it's been traumatic. Their once dream homes vandalised and left to rot. Now another kick in the guts for the 42 owners in this Ipswich complex. The government buyback offers finally have come through. We were out of pocket at least $120,000 to $150,000. We were promised the valuations would be between two fifty dollars to 300000 They're nowhere near that. Just one resident refuses to leave. Where else was going to live? I wasn't going to pay rent plus pay a mortgage off. Brett McGovern and his wife spent $32,000 to make their home somewhat livable. We've been through hell here for two years. Why can't the government come to the party and do the right thing? And the government offer? Pathetic. If those residents want to go and get an independent evaluation done on their property, we're more than happy to take that on board. But residents say any independent value will be even less than the buyback offer, which is based on values from well over two years ago, in which time house prices have risen dramatically. Properties aren't worth much now because they've been inundated and, and stripped out. 
While the figure is confidential, Seven News understands the government offer is around $200,000 to buy back these homes. To buy something similar in the area, you're looking around $360,000 to $400,000. We feel ripped off at this point. We're really keen to make sure that we're supporting people and they're getting a fair price for their homes. There's owners here that'll probably never own another home. A sad reality for more than a few. Steve Hart, Seven News. Large black clouds have been seen over southern France after a battery recycling plant caught fire. The facility housed 900 tonnes of lithium batteries, commonly used in mobile phones and electric cars. Despite the potential for toxic gases to be released, authorities insist the site is safe. Australian Olympic equestrian rider Shane Rose has been cleared, despite complaints about him wearing a cheeky mankini at a fancy dress event. Someone was offended, but many more were outraged by the way he was treated. Fully dressed and back in the saddle, three-time Olympian Shane Rose cannot believe he's found worldwide fame as the show jumper who showed too much. That's Australian. At the Wallaby Hill Equestrian Extravaganza in the fancy dress competition, the larrikin wore nothing but a mankini. He thought his only problem would be saddle sores. Mankinis, they're not that comfortable, I'll tell you. He also wore a Duffman beer suit and a gorilla outfit. <laughs> but someone in the crowd was offended and lodged a complaint. Equestrian Australia launched an investigation. A bit disappointing someone can do this, but we live in a, in a strange world these days. It sparked a bareback Barney, one board member so incensed with Rose's treatment, he quit. I've tendered my resignation from the board of EA effective immediately. And the event itself announced free mankinis to all spectators next year. Made famous by Borat, the mankini has been a fancy dress favourite, even appearing with the Prime Minister. But as laughable as the incident is, it does have potentially serious implications. Any suspension now could interfere with his qualification events for the Paris Olympics. But insiders tell us it just won't happen. Sure enough, within hours of hitting the worldwide headlines, Shane had been cleared. There was found to be no breach of our code of conduct or his athlete agreement. An incident that's at least given the sport a little more exposure. Chris Reason, 7 News. Large parts of China have been turned orange when sandstorms swept through the region. Visibility was reduced to less than 50 metres in some parts and cars banned from driving on some roads. Chinese authorities have issued an orange weather warning saying the cloud could take days to dissipate. A serial car scratcher targeting luxury vehicles. Up next, caught in the act. See the moment officers pounce. The mission to rescue a sick fisherman trapped on a trawler. Officers launch into action to save a stranded seal. And the supercar dream come true for sick Aussie kids. A fisherman has been winched to safety in a dramatic helicopter rescue off Gari. An RACQ life flight crew was called to his trawler off the island's east coast yesterday morning. The man in his 20s was suffering chest pains and needed urgent medical help. He was flown to Harvey Bay Hospital in a stable condition. A serial car scratcher has left owners furious, racking up thousands of dollars in repairs. With help from the public, police have made an arrest after some of the vehicles caught the alleged vandal in the act. Arrested in the act at a Schofield shopping centre last night. I reckon that's him. Apparently there's a guy being keying cars around Schofields. Accused car scratcher Nathan Abella back walking the streets today on bail. I, I may have keyed a car because it gets hot, I get frustrated. Police say he keyed six luxury cars, including three Teslas, in the last month. It's very bizarre. I thought, you know, the park, the, the mall parking would be the safest place to do it. Irving Bangalore's cameras captured these videos of the 34-year-old inside a Rouse Hill parking lot. I saw him actually doing the thing. Um, so scratching the car and right after that he actually looked back and, I don't know, maybe checked if he did it successfully. 
and the YouTuber has been sprung at multiple locations. If you watch all the CCTV video... Well, we've seen the video. Well, you clearly haven't because I've washed about 100 car windows a day. The 34-year-old who has a long history of mental illness is now banned from attending two shopping centres in Sydney's northwest. His lawyer telling the court he'll do whatever it takes to stay away from any vehicles. He's charged with six counts of malicious damage, the repair bill, more than $10,000. Hopefully he just, it just stopped. Do you have anything so, to say to the victims? Victims? Annie Puller, 7 News. Seven Group Holdings is making a bid to buy all of construction materials company Borrell. It currently owns more than 71% and is offering cash and its own shares to acquire the rest. Shareholders have been told owning Seven stock will mean they'll start receiving dividends again. Police in Connecticut have helped rescue a wayward seal. They were alerted to the lost pup on the weekend, but when they tried to usher it towards the beach, it kept sliding back to their patrol car, so the officers drove their car onto the beach and once the seal spotted the ocean, it finally lumbered back into the water. He's responsible for tackling Queensland's youth crime crisis. Tonight, Seven News goes on patrol with the no-nonsense detective cracking down. What police are doing and why they insist it's working, that exclusive report is just ahead. But sport time now and a pre-Vegas blow for the Broncos, Webby. Buddy Luck has not been kind, Sharon. Hello, everyone. Bracing for the worst. The Boom Bronco learns his fate. Plus, a seven exclusive. Lions star Charlie Cameron all smiles and ready to sink his teeth into 2024. Boom Bronco Brendan Piakura faces slim odds to take on the Roosters in Las Vegas Sunday week. The 21-year-old's now racing the clock with scans revealing the rising back rowers suffered an MCL strain. Back home in a brace and the Broncos bracing for his absence. Piakura's still in high spirits. Yeah, he's playing really well there and he's been really good all pre-season. So hopefully he's there for round one. I guess we'll have to wait and see how it all pulls up. But yeah, fingers crossed for him. Kurt Capewell's back row successor terrorised the second string Cowboys before succumbing to a strained MCL. Dragons recruit Jaden Hunt's on standby for the season opener. Um, he brings a lot of energy out there for us too. So if Brendy is for whatever reason not there for round one, I'm, I'm sure Hunt will be right to go. Payne Haas has avoided scrutiny for this swinging arm. Prop partner Corey Jensen made 160 metres, 25 tackles and a strong case for Tom Flegler's old spot. I mean everything. I've been sort of a toiler my whole career and sort of been starting here and on the bench there and I really feel this year it's it's a year where I've, I've trained really well in the pre-season. I'm probably physically in the best shape I've been. As the Broncos were arriving, the Bunnies weren't departing. The first team to head to America. Souths will set up in San Diego after a layover in Fiji. And then heading to Vegas on the Wednesday before the game, so it's about accepting that it might not be perfect, uh, getting our training right when we're there. While hopeful injured playmaker Cody Walker will overcome a calf injury, Demetrio believes defence will reign supreme on Allegiant Stadium's narrow field. The dimensions do make a difference. Um, it's definitely going to be more defence orientated. Uh, the weather I think will play a part as well, the cooler conditions. Mitch Crone, 7 News. Titans back rower Cleese Haas has escaped with a fine for this hair pull in last night's loss to the Dolphins. Trailing Des Hasler's Teen Titans at the break, a more experienced Redcliffe outfit retaliated with four tries to win by 12 points. And the boys are fit and, and playing well, but you know we've still got a lot to work on. You know, um, I thought we we really built some steps of last year. The Dolphins face the Warriors for their second trial Saturday in Auckland. The Lions' Charlie Cameron's undergone multiple dental surgeries to help him take a bite out of the competition come the opening round. Despite beating a PB last season, the confidence of Brisbane's excitement machine took a hit, but now he's back smiling. His box office for the Lions, a marketing dream. But Charlie Cameron breaks the mould as a pin-up boy. He's missing his front teeth. I've got a lisp when I talk, so it's quite frustrating when people... Um 
take the mickey out of me when I can't say my S's and stuff. June, round 16 against the Tigers, a head clash with Cochin. Plenty of blood there for Charlie. As you can imagine, the trauma wasn't just physical. So I've had, I think it was three surgeries so far. I've gone for my fourth, just a couple of implants and a bone marrow, marrow just to heal the bone because I fractured the bone up top here. Um, and so it's been a long process. And before you ask, yes, he was. I had a mouth guard in as well, so that was surprising when I felt the impact and I was like, oh, I think I lost my front teeth, so front gate. Now the All-Australians like a bull at a gate, ready to produce a career-high 59 goals in a season. He and teammates come armed with lessons from the grand final. Yeah, the boys learn from it and I guess we've put that in the practice now, training and stuff, scenarios and stuff coming into the season. After 2017 with the Crows, Charlie's owned two in deciders, but the only scars he's got from the dentist. It took me, I think it was seven years to get back there to have that, I guess, the ability to know that we can get there. It's just a matter of just finishing our work. Ready to sink his teeth into 2024. Alyssa Smith, 7 News. After a warm welcome, David Warner's ready for his final tour of New Zealand, but he's also armed with a plan to improve trans-Tasman relations. A windy Wellington welcome before a three-game T20 series starting Wednesday with David Warner, the diplomat. It's been a wee while since we've toured here. It's good to be back here, that's for sure. Till he was reminded of rare previous visits. The crowd, yeah, they got personal, but if they have to get personal, that's their character. If you want to pay your money to come and abuse people, then, you know, you have to go back and lay in your own bed. On Australia's duty to foster Kiwi cricket. I think definitely Australia should come over here more. Um, I don't know why the reasons we haven't come over here. I've always said or mentioned that we should have a New Zealand team in the in the Big Bass competition. He's sticking with the exit plan. After June's T20 World Cup, he'll become a global gun for hire for a couple of years. Then... Politics? Yeah, look, uh, I'll leave that for another time. I think I'd get absolutely grilled if I was to go into politics. Hammered by 434 runs in Rajkot, India's greatest test win, trailing 2-1 in their five-test series, Ben Stokes blamed DRS flaws, not brazen basball, for England's predicament. We got a great chance to, to come home with a trophy at 3-2. Matt Carmichael, 7 News. Isaac Cooper is Australia's newest world champion, taking out the 50 metres backstroke on the final night in Doha. The 21-year-old won the final despite hitting the lane rope several times. Cooper needed the rope as a guide because he found the curved roof of the Aspire Dome disorientating. He could scare the world record if he stayed in the middle of the lane. He must have hit it three or four times. The execution can definitely get better, but that's an awesome swim and I'm great that I was able to be beside these guys as well. Our women's 4x100 medley relay team also won gold. Shane, that's our Monday sport. All right, thank you, Webby. Well, let's check finance and the Australian share market finished marginally higher. A2 Milk surged almost 12.5% after releasing its half-year results. But not such a good day for real estate group Lendlease, diving nearly 14%, while investors are sweating on tomorrow's release of BHP's financials. And the Aussie dollar is buying 65.4 US cents. An Australian billionaire has helped some of our most deserving youngsters achieve their motorsport dreams. The junior rev heads hung on tight for a high octane joyride. A luxury lineup ready for speed <laughs> and an adrenaline rush. How fast are we talking? Like 150 kilometres per hour. Ohio. Supercars gifting sick kids a memory like no other at Sydney's Eastern Creek Raceway, generously donated by a Perth billionaire. To combine passion together with meaning to giving to giving back, it's just one of the most fulfilling uh, things. Among the prize possessions, this special edition Mercedes AMG GTR, one of only five in the world, and this McLaren Senna worth 2.5 million. It's the first time this event has come to Sydney. The opportunity to have a memorable experience like this, you can't put a dollar figure on this, right? One passenger is Cooper Wynn. He's been in and out of hospital with a rare bone cancer. We'll never be able to thank him enough just to give us that little bit of respite. With continued success, the Driven Project is on the fast track to achieving its vision, to give as many chronically sick kids around the world the best day ever. Days like today where I get to see the smiles, you get the high fives, the fist bumps, it, it's, it validates everything. A job well done. Angelique Opie, 7 News.
No nonsense and no excuses. Coming up, we're with the police officer taking on Queensland's youth crime crisis. And at the moment it's 23 degrees in Ipswich. I'll have the forecast for the rest of the week. Coming up next. Tonight, we can take you on the front line of Queensland's youth crime fight. Seven News has gone on patrol with the straight-talking top police officer tasked with tackling the crisis. No nonsense, no excuses. Acting Assistant Commissioner Andrew Massingham means business. The last couple of months since you've taken on this role, I mean, how do you think things are going? At the moment, I'm, I'm quite happy with where we're situated. The strategies we're using, particularly with Task Force Guardian um, and a number of other strategies that we've used, um, are certainly paying dividends. Tasked with tackling one of the state's most serious issues with almost four decades of experience under his belt, Seven News joined him on the road. In instances where, where kids are at risk and uh, you know we're trying to refer them um, so they can have a better life. Early intervention, a key focus, including regular programs with the PCYC, targeting children who've already been exposed to crime. Working in conjunction with the youth co-responder team. We're actually liaising with these kids and find out there's a lot more going on and a lot of these families are broken. To catch those already offending, wanding powers are working. Have you really noticed a bit of a change in the behaviours and that people know that they can be wanded anywhere at any time? Yes, yeah, so over 12 months now, um, I think well and truly the uh, behaviour is changing. Um, we've recovered some 450 weapons uh, at this point in time. We're looking to expand that to the retail um, uh, shopping centres and precincts. Answering the public's calls following the horrific murder of Violene White. Is it tough when you get serious crimes like that for people to still look at the bigger picture and understand, you know, that there is a lot of work that's being done? Yes, it is, but, but we certainly do understand the community concerns and outrage um, around those crimes. Specialist Operation Task Force Guardian targeting the serious repeat offenders has put more than 400 juveniles behind bars, including this 16-year-old boy arrested at Anala, wanted on 75 offences. Expansions to electronic monitoring devices are being investigated to assist police with this. We're here to do a bail check. 57,000 have been done in the past year. We just did a bail check on a 14-year-old male. Um, as per his bail conditions, he's required to be in the address from 6pm to 6am. Are you confident that what you're doing and the approach that you're taking is working and is going to continue to keep working. Yes, I'm very confident. I think we've got the mix right at the moment. The work really has only just begun in a way. Um, I, I think we've got a, um, a lot of work ahead of us. If at the end of this year I have less victims than, than what we did in previous years, I'll be quite happy. Adam McGraw, 7 News. Weather now, here's Tony. Thank you, Max. Hello, everyone. It was another grey and wet afternoon in the southeast, but we did manage to get some clear sky this morning, and that's off the back of this beautiful sunrise taken at Wynnum yesterday. A big thanks to Julie Finter for sending it in. Heavy showers and storms through the early afternoon. That has eased back to some lighter showers over the past couple of hours, though fresh storm warnings have been issued for heavy rain for another round of storms well inland. The extra cloud has kept us a little bit cooler. Tops of 29 from the Sunshine Coast down towards the Gold Coast Seaway and also for Brisbane a few inland spots reaching 30 or 31. Across Queensland today, the wet weather in the southeast is off the back of a bigger cluster of storms over northern New South Wales. Also, some of that activity spilling over into the Darling Downs and Maranoa and Warrego. Otherwise, more sporadic showers and storms dotted across the tropics. Over the next day, onshore winds continue for the Queensland coast, bringing more potential for some cloud and rainfall. But the atmosphere stabilises a bit, so it should be in the form of lighter and more isolated showers. Around the nation tomorrow, Perth's heatwave continues, 39 degrees on the forecast, showers and a possible storm in Sydney. Back to Queensland, we're expecting a shower or two for Cairns and Townsville, a little bit lighter around Mackay and the Central Coast. Over southern districts, the storms ease back, leaving some isolated showers along the coast and ranges all the way from Stanthorpe up to Rockhampton. Across the southeast, much drier than today. Still, most spots could rustle up a shower and just a passing sprinkle possible for Pink's Gold Coast concert tomorrow night. Similar temperatures to today, tops of 29 along the bayside, Oxley pushing up to 30 degrees. 
Bodies subtly wins on Moreton Bay to start. They'll then swing more easterly and ease into the afternoon and evening. So in Brisbane, a possible shower for your Tuesday, most likely around lunchtime, 21 overnight, back up to a top of 29 degrees. Looking ahead, similar conditions for the next few days, that mix of patchy clouds, sunny breaks and the odd passing shower. Same pattern in Ipswich, then heating up again, 33 degrees on Thursday, up to 34 on Friday. Gold Coasters, you'll also have the odd passing shower this week, nothing too heavy for a few days at least. And on the Sunshine Coast, 29 degrees Wednesday, 30 Thursday, 31 on Friday. Then Sharon and Max, the chance of showers bumps up again next weekend. Not the best of timing for that. All right, thank you, Tony. Now, before we go, here's a look at a special report we have for you tomorrow night. On 7 News, the grandparent economy holding up Australia in 2024. The bank of Nan and Pop. Boomers now with 48% of national wealth. This is a new phenomenon. The exclusive breakdown of how this generation is making all the difference, helping their families while living life to the full on 7 News at 6. And that's all from us this Monday. Thanks for your company. The latest from 7 News is on at 10 tonight. But for now, from all the team, have a good night. Good night.